Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Basketball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Whether you live in rural Iowa or in the big city, the Iowa Network Services family of companies and your local provider are working together to keep you connected by offering technology and business solutions like internet, data networking, and other business services. The INS family of companies keeping communities connected today and tomorrow. Fairway, along with Mondelez Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay, is a proud sponsor of the 2014 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Basketball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist. Providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Iowa banks know you want honest advice about how to best reach your financial goals, whether it's financing and education, buying a new home, growing a business, or funding retirement. Iowa banks, Iowa values. MyIowaBank.com. Mid-American Energy, diversifying the ways we generate electricity by investing in wind generation capacity in Iowa. Information is available at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. You may know right where you belong. Helping you get there is our job. At DMAC, we connect what you want in life to what you do for a living. With more than 150 programs, transfer degrees, and short-term certificates, DMAC can position you for a great career. Welcome to downtown Des Moines, where it's a brisk night for ice skating. But across the river inside Wells Fargo Arena, it's warm and comfortable for an exciting evening of Iowa high school hoops. Welcome to our inaugural night of live girls basketball tournament coverage here on statewide Iowa public television. Hello, I'm Paul Yeager, and throughout the night, IPTV Sports will bring you analysis, highlights, and features from right here at our on-site sports desk, and we'll make sure to showcase all the pageantry of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Iowa Farm Bureau State Basketball Championships. But first, let's head courtside with B.J. Shaben and Laura Leonard for their call of the 1A State Championship. Well, it is time for basketball. It is the 1A title game. 30 games have been played. Now it's time for five more, and they will decide who is going to be the state champion. And we start with this matchup tonight with the Burlington Notre Dame Knights taking on the Mustangs of Newell Fonda. Hi again, everyone, with Laura Leonard. This is BJ Shaven. And Laura, this is a stat junkies dream game here in this 1A title game. Well, it really is. I mean, there's a lot of numbers that you can look at. I think the biggest thing that jumps out to me is you have a high scoring offense against a defense that doesn't allow a lot of points. So one of those things is going to have to give in this ball game tonight. Each of these two teams looking for their first ever state championship. Newell Fonda, of course, has been here five times before. And last year, a runner up. They were turn four starters now they're trying to get that elusive goal to be headed back up to northwest Iowa let's get the introduction of both teams from well a Trudan native and now the Carol Kemper Catholic athletic director Tim Fitzpatrick Each year at the State Basketball Tournament, the Iowa Bankers Association presents the Student Athlete Achievement Award to a student athlete who excels on the court, in the classroom, and in her community. 
the recipient receives a $1,000 scholarship to the college of her choice. Presenting the 2014 award is Steve Russell with First State Bank in Linville. The 2014 Student Athlete Achievement Award winner is Lindsay Terpstra from Linville Sully High School. Congratulations, Lindsay. Can you tell us what your plans are for the scholarship? I will be attending Iowa State University to study athletic training. <laughs> Wonderful. Congratulations, Lindsay. And thank you for your sponsorship of the athletic scholarship for the Iowa Bankers Association. And thank you, Iowa Bankers Association, for your sponsorship. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. And now it's time to meet our teams. For this Class 1A championship between the visiting Burlington Notre Dame Nikes and the home team, the Newell Fonda Mustangs. Here are your non-starters and assistant coaches for the visitors from Burlington, Notre Dame. Number 13, Alex Ackerman. Number 23, Courtney Abolt. Number 25, Jayla Chris. Number 31, Gabrielle Kelker. Number 35, Alyssa Schwartz. Number 41, Caitlin Klein. Number 45, Hannah Delaney. Number 51, Joanna Myers. Number 53, Reagan Rogerson. And number 55, Dee Dee Gilbert. Assistant coaches for the Nikes, Kayla Henry, Steve Gray, Jim Myers, and Dan Hickey. And now, here are your non-starters and assistant coaches for the home team from Newell Fonda. Number 10, Jordan Wilkin. Number 14, Morgan Magnuson. Number 20, Courtney Temple. Number 30, Abby Smith. Number 34, Maddie Morenz. Number 42, Haley Feline. Number 44, Mallory Seavers. Number 50, Kate Christensen. Number 52, Abby Christensen. And number 54, Taylor Dix. And Emily Archer. Your assistant coaches, Kevin Larson and Courtney Vaughn. Senior number 40, Claudia Larson. 
Johnson. Head coach for the Nikes is Colin Alfred. For the Mustangs, Dick Jungers. Call your attention to the area in front of the score bench. Our officiating crew has assigned to this 1A championship game by the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union, Scott Bloom, Randall Bloom, Sean Peterson. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for some tournament basketball? Yes, we are. Newell Fonda wearing their home whites with royal blue. And for the Knights of Burlington Notre Dame, they will be in their away navy with gold numbers trimmed in white. Again, your starters for Burlington Notre Dame with Mesker, Coffin, Kilbride, Hickey, and Salvador. And for Newell Fonda, it'll be Manaman, Shrank, Wells, Hess, and look out for Claudia Larson in the post. The 6'1 senior averaging better than 12 and a half per game and has gone on quite a roll here at the state tournament. So it will be Salvador and Larson jumping it up in the center circle as the two teams are ready to hit it. What a way to get the state championship started with Newell Fonda and Burlington Notre Dame. And it will be the Mustangs who will control the ball first. This is a team that offensively has really found a groove here at the state tournament. Well, they really have. They have really found the mark offensively. I think the fact that they've played here a year ago, we're in the title game. They know this floor very well, so they feel very comfortable. Well, here's Burlington Notre Dame. They lost last year in the semifinals to Central Lion, who would eventually go on to beat the Mustangs by two. And a near steal by Manaman. And it's on the floor and will be picked up there by Larson. So here is Renee Manaman. She has had a monster tournament so far. We'll kick it to the corner. That's three for Wells. Bring it up. Well, talk about those 13 assists that she had in the first game. She picks up one right there. And they have to pay attention to her scoring, so they defend that. That leaves other players open. Burlington Notre Dame get used to that. They will fire it fast as they try to run the floor. Here's Larson. And Right away, Newell Fonda jumping out to a 5-0 lead. Good job by Larson filling the lane and running the break, getting herself open, received a great pass in rhythm, knocked it down. Inside, Salvador can't get it. A rebound for Larson, who's coming off of a 20-20 game. 20 points, 20 rebounds against Colonesco in the semifinals. Well, she really had a great game that second game in the semis. She was all over the place, especially on the boards. That's impressive. 20 points, 20 rebounds in a game. Larson inside. Out of Larson, the 15-footer. And the rebound, last touch by Newell Fonda as Jade Hess got her hand on it. And the Mustangs again with this early lead at 5 to nothing, a three by Wells and Larson. Adding a quick bucket. Here are the keys to the game for Burlington Notre Dame. What they need to do is stay out of foul trouble. They got into a little bit of trouble in the semis, but they need to have all their players on the floor, keep the fresh legs on the floor, and they need to keep Manaman in check. And so far, they've done that on the scoring side, but she's been able to get the ball out. And a substitution coming into the ball game. Alyssa Schwartz will come into the game. What about Newell Fonda? They need to control the tempo. They need to run when they need to run, but they want to slow it down when they see that opportunity. And then they're going to work that high-low game, see if they can get Larson set up down low or get her up high at the free throw line and see if they can dump it inside. Manaman really caught up in traffic and will be fouled there by Riley Kilbride. That'll be the first team foul against Burlington Notre Dame. I think Burlington Notre Dame wants to try to be aggressive, try to force Newell Fonda out of their offense, force him away from the basket. There's Colin Alfred, the head coach for Burlington Notre Dame in his seventh season. 
I mean, the one thing that was a little refreshing in talking to Coach Alfred, we talked about all the scoring. His team had a stretch earlier this year of eight games where they averaged better than 92 points per contest. We asked him, Coach, what's your philosophy with offense? He said, just let him shoot it. Just, just score. Just score more points. Put the ball in the hoop. And uh, that's kind of what they do. He said this team knows what to do. He really doesn't have to coach them a whole lot. He lets them be the coaches on the floor. And a quick turnover. Here's Bannerman underneath. Gets fouled on the play by Hickey. And will go to the line. Newell Fonda with a 5-0 lead here. Let's take a look at the turnover again. The good quick hands and just a, a one-handed pass by Hickey. And Manman was able to get up in the passing lane and knock it away. This full court pressure is going to be all over in the backcourt. You have to step to the ball. You have to make good passes against this pressure. Manaman will go on to play basketball at Northwestern. And it's been an Orange City feel to the state tournament. Of course, tomorrow it'll be an all Orange City final here on IPTV. As you've got Unity Christian taking on MOC Floyd Valley. There's Hickey, can't get the bucket. And for a team that's averaging better than 82 a game, right now Burlington Notre Dame held scoreless here down 6-0. They, yep. had, they had a slow start in the semis yesterday, but able to make those adjustments at halftime and win that ball game. Oh, for their first four from the floor. Here's Larson caught up in traffic. This one tied up. Possession arrow gives it to Burlington Notre Dame. Right now, the tempo is favoring Newell Fonda. They are playing that up-tempo style of game, and it's speeding up Burlington. There's Dick Jungers in the blue there on the bench. Dick, of course, in his 12th season. Had at one time both coach basketball and softball focusing now just on basketball as the putback goes through for Burlington Notre Dame. A side relief as Gabby Kelker just checked into the game gets the bucket. Now on this end, here's Newell Fonda. And the rebound by Feline. And she'll be fouled on the play and will go to the line. Newell Fonda not allowing Burlington Notre Dame to get their pressure set up at all. After the long pass, they got a good look at the three, a good rebound inside by Feline, and she was able to draw the contact. This free throw for Newell Fonda. Well, let's check the players out on the floor. You've got Jordan Wolken, Maddie Morenz, and Haley Farine, who Feline, excuse me, just checked into the contest. Now for Burlington Notre Dame, they're also going to their bench. As Alicia Swartz, the 5'7 junior now in. One out of two from the strike for Haley Feline. Looks like they're going to try to trap. Hickey's got the ball in her hands. They put it primarily in her hands to try to break the pressure with dribbling. Look for Newell Fonda to maybe try to trap her in the backcourt. Burlington Notre Dame without a senior on their roster. But somehow they've been resilient all year. They actually opened up the season with a victory over Davenport Assumption. They fell down by 16 points in that one at the half and rallied for a six point win. Well, this is a team that can score a lot of points and so you're never out of a ball game. Burlington Notre Dame quickly attacking. That's Corey Mester with the field goal. And now it's starting to pick up here for the Nikes. You gotta like the way Mesker just faced up, saw the opening, good first step, was able to split through the defense and get to the glass. There's one last touch by Burlington Notre Dame. It'll stay with Newell Fonda. Their philosophy, make the extra pass. And that one deflected out of bounds, but it's really been an interesting philosophy that we've seen at the state tournament. They make that extra pass, but it's a team that's averaging over 70 here at Wells Fargo Arena. You just want to make get the best look that you can, and if that means you don't have it, but you can make that extra pass, then go ahead and get the assist, get somebody else open. Taylor Shrink and Jade Hess checking back into the ball game here for Newell Fonda. Here's Hess in the lane. Going to be fouled on the play as this one goes against Gabby Kelker of Burlington Notre Dame. That'll be the third team foul. Make it the fourth on the Knights. Newell Fonda has been getting to the line a lot here. A team that came in averaging nearly 60% from the foul line. And tonight, just two of five. 
Well, they're getting there early, and you have to make the most of those opportunities. It doesn't matter if they're at the end of the ball game or right before halftime. If you're getting to that free throw line, you've got to make the most of that opportunity and score. Hess misses them both, just 37% on the year. Here's Hickey launching. And the rebound to Mester. Mesker was trailing the play and in the right spot at the right time. A little bit off balance as she got that rebound, able to get her steps right and get to the glass. After a slow start, Burlington Notre Dame picking it up. It's a one point ball game here with 340 to play in the opening quarter. You could see that Hickey was pointing out, directing traffic. Great rebound as Mesker fills the lane and finds her way around the defense. The turnaround not there. Good defense by Mesker. As Kilbride will pick up the loose ball here for Burlington Notre Dame, but the Mustangs force the turnover. Wait a sec. This one's knocked around. This one will stay with Newell Fonda. You have to protect the dribble, and Riley Kilbride just kept that dribble right out in front, and Manneman reached right in and snuck it away, picked her pocket. This will be Larson who will put it in play. And the Knights nearly come up with a steal. And a foul will be called on Claudia Larson. That'll be her first. So Burlington Notre Dame back with the basketball here again. Good tip and getting into the passing lane. Then the scramble for the loose ball. And you can see the foul right there reaching in from behind. For the season, Burlington Notre Dame, as of now, right at 2,121 points. That's the most scored in the state this year. And again, we mentioned they got off to a slow start, but they just fire away. Well, everybody has the green light. Everybody can shoot. And there's a good example of it. Courtney Coffin, who shoots 36% from three-point range. You leave her open, she's going to knock them down. So for the first time in this game, Burlington Notre Dame has a two-point lead. This match is the largest deficit by Newell Fonda. When they started the tournament, they fell down to Bedford 2-0, but they have not been behind since until the title game here. Good ball movement around the outside of the defense. And Coffin wide open, pulls the trigger. Larson able to hit the free throw. Claudia, 59% free throw shooter on the year. We mentioned that 2020 she had the other night. Coach Dick Junger said it was the most premier performance he's ever seen by a high school player against Golanesco. And they needed it. And they, they did need it. And, and that's pretty high praise, but it was fun to watch. And she just was everywhere on the floor. And it just seemed like she was so comfortable with her shot. Coffin can't get that one to fall. And the rebound tracked down by Renee Manneman, who's had to do a lot of work with the ball so far here in the first quarter. Does it here, a little magic. Can't get it to fall, and the rebound to Notre Dame. That shows you how good she is as a ball handler. She was able to get around all the defense, but check that out. Courtney Goffin brings it right back at him. A little floating left-hander, 11 to eight. Burlington Notre Dame with their largest lead here. And the trap now comes. And another steal. This one by Kilbride. He's turning the table a little bit on Mua Fonda. They're the one that likes to press and turn the ball over, turn that defense into offense. The Knights on an 11 to one run and a foul here called against Burlington Notre Dame. This one goes against Taylor Hickey. This is a big one. That's her second. She's their leading scorer, averaging over 19 per game. Here's a good look at that drive of Courtney Coffin able to get in and then the steal with the trap and defense and Kilbride able to get into the passing lane and get another two. So for the Nikes coming into the game, it'll be Courtney Abel. She'll try to spell Hickey here. We'll have to sit for probably the rest of the first half. Here's Larson. Spinning it hard inside, gets the two over Dee Dee Gilbert, who also just checked into the game for Burlington Notre Dame. Those are the kinds of moves she was making in the semifinals, just able to walk around the defense and get her body at angles where she could get the ball up on the glass. 13 points after going 0 for the first four 
from the field for Burlington Notre Dame as Emily Salvador will come back into the contest. She'll re replace Didi Gilbert. But this is a Burlington Notre Dame team that set a 1A record by scoring 37 points in a quarter against Adair Casey in the quarterfinals here at the state tournament. Boy, that was a nice inbound play. Got a good screen, just could not get it up over the rim to score. There's Wells. And the rebound to Burlington Notre Dame. And a steal by Wells. That'll be the fourth turnover of the game as Manneman goes inside. And Moran's going to be called for a double dribble. That'll be the fifth turnover by the Mustangs. One of these teams is going to have to decide to just bring it down just a level because it's getting very high paced, a lot of turnovers, not able to get set. I know both of these teams like to get out and run when they can, but they're turning it over a little bit too much. Look at the attack and the foul. Kelker will go to the line. No hesitation. Generally, there's a little bit of jitters in the <laughs> state championship game, right? For yeah. any team, anywhere, these two teams don't have jitters. They're just filling each other out as they're taking it right at one another. And she didn't have the numbers either. I mean, it would, theory would tell you to pull it back out, wait for your teammates to get down there. Instead, she was in attack mode and is able to get to the free throw line. I want to remind you, coming up here at the quarter break, we'll catch you up on these two teams' journey to the championship with Paul Yeager. He's hanging out in the sports desk with some popcorn. You need it for this one at home here, folks. What a quarter here, 14 to 10. Burlington Notre Dame with the advantage. The Mustangs with the ball here. Manneman goes inside to Larson. Boy, that's like Stockton to Malone. Manneman to Larson. I think they've worked that a few times. That was just like clockwork. Knew when the screen was coming, little air underneath that pass, right underneath the basket for the easy deuce. Foul here on Jordan Wilkin of Newell Fonda. That'll be her first. There's a good look at it, and you can see how Larson was able to uh, keep Mesker out of the way and able to get a body on her so she could get the good pass. Manneman who had 13 assists which tied a tournament record against Bedford in the quarters. Doing her magic again with a high low game. Now back at it. Here's Burlington Notre Dame. This one partially deflected. Good defense on the perimeter by Morenz. Good dribble penetration, drawing that defense in and kicking it out, but they were able to recover with the block shot. Manneman lost the handle on that one. Another turnover. And Burlington Notre Dame will get it back with 11 and a half seconds. They're going to put Taylor Hickey back into the game, even with the two fouls. They want to try to get some points here. Both of these teams are up-tempo, a little run and gun, but... You'll see a little high-low out of Newell Fonda, more so of sets, but with Burlington Notre Dame, they're just going to take whatever the open shot is. Here's Hickey. Salvador, did she get it? They're going to count it. The officials say yes, that basketball went through the hoop. It was off of her hands before she shot it, and Burlington Notre Dame will have a four-point lead after the first eight minutes. Well, let's go to the journey to the championship with Paul Yeager. All right, thank you, BJ. Thank you very much, Laura. We're up here in the IPTV Sports Studio. Let's find out how these two teams got here. It was uh, Colonesco and Newell Fonda on Wednesday night and also Burlington, Notre Dame, and Janesville. We begin with the Royals of Colonesco and the Mustangs of Newell Fonda, top ranked in Class 1A. Early on in the left-hand corner, it's uh, Brianna Wells and it's Claudia Larson, who's also having a big game tonight, the Royals. Well, they had Shayla Dean. She tried to keep her team in this ball game, as did Caitlin Reese. But it was Claudia Larson and her 20 points, 20 rebounds in Wednesday night's contest that led the Mustangs, and they were just too strong down the end, even though uh, Reese had uh, 19 against Linville Sully, but Newell Fonda wins 95-34 in the first semifinal. The second semifinal was Burlington Notre Dame and Janesville, the Wildcats, they were the class uh, 1A volleyball champions. Could they carry that success over? Well, they started early from three. That was uh, 
A big shot for Janesville to get them going, but Taylor Hickey was scoring and she was also dishing. That time that was Courtney Coffin from the left side and then Taylor Hickey comes back and she also is the co-captain of this squad. She dishes again for the three ball and Burlington Notre Dame, the Nikes win 65-58 and they down Janesville. And that is how we are shaping up. Let's go back down courtside with BJ and Laura. Well, thank you very much, Paul. 16 to 12. Newell Fonda got out to a 6 0 lead. And of course, uh, you take a look at these two teams. This isn't it for the scoring on the night, as they can really fill it up. Well, they can, and you can see that. The top scoring teams in 1A and Burlington Notre Dame with those 81 points a game. And uh, Newell Fonda themselves, they can light it up. But the one thing that's impressive, you look back on Newell Fonda's season, they're only giving up 39 points a game. So defensively, they've been able to shut opponents down. So two high scoring teams see if the defense can win out or if it's going to be somebody that can light it up from the outside. Well, Laura, a number we're going to have to keep an eye on for Newell Fonda. Here's a team that has averaged just 12 turnovers per game here at the state tournament. So far through the first eight, they've got six. A lot of pressure as they pound it inside and a travel called as Haley Feline got the ball in good position, but it's turned over as Taylor Schrank will check back into the game along with Brianna Wells for Newell Fonda. When you look at those first two games uh, for Burlington Notre Dame of the tournament, they forced Adair Casey into 27 turnovers, 24 for Janesville. Well, there's a turnover, but Noah Fonda unable to get it the first time, but the second time, Renee Manneman, the stat stuffer, getting it done for the Mustangs. And this ball will belong to Noah Fonda because of Manneman. She's a softball pitcher, too. Got to have some quick hands on the rotation. And really showing it there on the set play, the three off the mark for Shrank. Well, Manaman just does not let up. And she is everywhere. Quick hands right there, picks the pocket and gets inside, misses it, goes after it again. Back into action, Burlington Notre Dame trying to drive it and fill it with Kilbride, but it's rebounded by Newell Fonda, but take that right back. The color by Corey Mesker. Six points for Mesker. The junior came in averaging about 10 per game. Well, you can tell by both of these defenses that you absolutely need to take care of the ball. You can't dribble it out front. You can't hold it out front because these hands on both teams are very quick. A foul called away from the ball. This one going against Newell Fonda as it goes against Faileen. As she was called for an illegal screen. Just trying to open the door for Manaman as she drove the baseline. And sometimes you get a little too aggressive when you see your teammate has an opening. You want to clear the way for him. Sometimes you back down your defender a little bit too much and you get caught. Here's Hickey with two fouls in the game here. Avoids the triple team. Yeah, you see that. You see the triple team. You have to figure if you move the ball around quick enough, somebody is going to be open. Against Janesville in the semis, Hickey did play with four fouls for much of that game. As Mesker will go to the line as that foul is registered against Claudia Larson, which will be her second. Now Larson thought she had stood her ground, but she was moving as Mesker was taking the ball to the hoop. You've got to get those feet set and get in position. Mesker, a 72% free throw shooter. You know, she signed to play softball at Illinois State. Very good program out of the Missouri Valley Conference. Very talented athlete. Plays multiple positions for the Knights. As here's Larson. Now Manaman firing and hitting. A little splash down in downtown. Well, you give her that much room and allow her to step into it. She received that pass, stepped right into it, and let it fly. Two-point game, and the Mustangs have an opportunity to tie it up or take the lead again. As Manaman's bringing the ball down the floor, she is looking all around. Her eyes are looking everywhere. Larson will tie it up. Boy, on the offensive glass, Newell Fonda has been a wrecking crew tonight. 
Well, that's how you get those second chance opportunities. Get yourself in position to grab the rebound. Here's an opportunity for Burlington Notre Dame. Mesker can't get it the ball, and Manman with another rebound. That's going to be her third. Now doing a little work with the ball to Larson. Gets the assist. And a timeout will be taken by Burlington Notre Dame. That's what Manneman can do with the ball. Dribble drive, and then draw the defense and kick it. Now here's a look at the three-point shot. Nothing but net right there. Stepping into it, you can see one dribble, toes up the line, and knocks it down. You can't give her that much room. By the way, the coaches are gonna be mic'd up here tonight. For your listening pleasure, when this thing gets a little heated, so Newell Fonda has erased a five-point deficit as Senator Chuck Grassley, among many dignitaries in attendance here for this 1A state championship game. You know, Senator Grassley has been here to the state tournament for many, many years. Well, he hasn't missed one in a long time. I know that. He is here every year. Here's Hickey for three. Can't get that one to fall. And the putback is there for Burlington Notre Dame's Alicia Swartz, her first bucket. Normally, the long three ball comes rebounding long off the rim. That one fell right to Schwartz, and she was able to get the putback. So the Mustangs will reset it up with Manneman. Into the corner, the three ball. Off the mark, and the board belongs to Abel. Now Hickey playing with those two fouls, as is Larson. The two at one another right now. A little bit of a mismatch because Larson's a lot taller than Hickey. Look at Mesker. Can't get the shot to fall. As another rebound from Adamant. The Mustangs on offense. Get the bucket. Hard charge and Brianna Wells. And Wells went right at Hickey. See if she could draw another foul on her. But Hickey kind of backed away. Got a little contact. But knew she shouldn't be there in that position. Didn't want to pick up another foul. Wells now has five in the game. Leading score is Larson with 11. Seven by Corey Mesker is the best so far for Burlington Notre Dame. Here's Hickey. They're trying to get her open at the high post. They're trying to get a high post screen to let her drive around it, but the defense is switching and popping out. Here's Hickey inside, can't get it to fall. She had a rough start against Janesville in the semis. And it's continued here in the championship game. Well, she had 27 in that first game, 18 in the second game, but she had six assists to go along with those 18 points in the semis. Foul here against Delicia Swartz, so this will put Manman at the line for the single bonus. Getting some fresh legs in there. Newell Fonda with the tempo and the pace that this game is going. You got to keep fresh bodies on the floor at all times. Two point game, 3.28 to play here in the first half. And Manneman sinks the first free throw. You know, she really does it all for this Mustang team. You see her numbers on the season, but what's been also very impressive has been the fact that she really distributes the basketball. Came in averaging about just over five assists per game, but here at the state tournament, those numbers really elevated. Well, tied that tournament record of 13. Big giant step there for Coffin. That'll give the ball back to Newell Fonda. And Burlington Notre Dame back to the bench as Emily Salvador comes back in, along with Riley Kilbrun. And that's what you want to do against pressure, to get the ball into the middle of the floor, give yourself more options and more angles to get to the hoop. Manneman goes inside. And this one last touch by Newell Fonda as she tried to hit Feline. Do the Mustangs have the tempo in their favor right now? 
You know, I think they do. I, I really think they do because they've played this full court pressure defense the entire season, and they know how they can go up tempo. We just know that Burlington Notre Dame, they can score and they get out and run, but I think this defense is causing some problems for the Nikes. By the way, the Nikes, the definition is a winged goddess of victory. They're the only Nike in the country. But right now, there was a big three put down by Matty Morenz. Enough with the history lesson. Back to basketball. Here's Hickey. Going to be fouled and will go to the line to shoot two. And that foul going against Matty Morenz. And Newell Fonda with her largest lead of the game here at seven. They opened up a 6 nothing lead to begin the contest. And Burlington Notre Dame actually went up by five before the long Mustang run here. Well, you got to like the fact that Burlington Notre Dame, they gave up the big shot on the other end, but they come right back and attack. And that's just the, the tempo. And I think the attitude of these two teams, if they get down, they're going to continue to attack. Manaman to the corner. There's Wells for three. And the rebound tip to Larson. Can't get the put back. And Mesher, Mesker, excuse me, will clear it for Burlington Notre Dame. Mesker's putting together quite a game here in the state final. Here's Kilbride. Bring it up. Kilbride had a huge three pointer in that semifinal game. And going to the free throw line right now is going to be Haley Feline. Fouled on the play with a minute 46 to play here in the first half. We want to let you know coming up at the half. We'll have highlight statistics much more plus the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union awards and honors. And a look back at 45 years of IPTV high school coverage. That and more all coming up at the half here of this 1A state championship game. Haley Feline, 80% from the field since the postseason started. And score actually scored 16 points off the bench in their victory against Bedford in the quarterfinals. And they're getting production from a lot of players, not just one or two. A charge will be called. So Newell Fonda will hold on to the one point lead here with a buck 33 to play. Elaine did a great job of setting up as Kilbride puts her head down trying to dribble into the defense. Manman will take it to the rack. Why not? Three point advantage here for the Mustangs. And Celine had a part in that as well. She was able to screen off her defender to open up the alleyway for Manman. Manman now with 10. Here's Burlington Notre Dame inside and Hickey will be pushed before the shot as that foul will be rung up against Taylor Shrink. It's got to be a little frustrating out on the floor for Taylor Hickey. Everywhere she goes, she's got somebody trailing her and somebody in front of her. So every time if she turns her back with a reverse dribble, somebody's right there. So they're going to have to make some adjustments at halftime to try to figure out how to get her a little bit more room. Had a miscue with the score. It is 30 to 26 now. Here's Hickey. Can't hit the front end of the one and one, so the Mustangs will get it back. 105 to play here in the first half. Four point advantage for Newell Fonda. Here's Larson from the wing. Now to Manaman. They're looking to try to run that high low with Larson and Feline. Now they're switching positions. They got Feline up top. They had Larson open. Mustangs unable to hit it as Manaman will reset. She's doing the smart thing. You might as well attack because you know that Taylor Hickey has got some foul problems. And she does. Manaman pulled that one off the glass for two. It's a six point advantage here for the Mustangs. Burlington Notre Dame out ahead. Now they'll set up shot pulled for one here. 
Here's Kelker trying to drive it inside and it's turned over. Larson now to Manaman, down to three to two. Why not at the horn, Manaman? And that will be the end of the first 16 minutes here of this Class 1A state championship game. 32 to 26. Newell Fonda has the advantage as Coach Dick Jungers trying to get an explanation there about the score, but it is correct now. As, well, they're probably going to have to check the stat sheet to make sure they can get it correct. Here's Paul Yeager. All right, thanks, BJ. And uh, we're getting ready to uh, talk with head coach Dick Jungers of the Newell Fonda Mustangs. We'll find out what he has to say as uh, the Mustangs, their biggest lead was seven points in this first half. And coach, uh, you're joining us now. What do you think of the pace of this ball game? Oh, it's a, it's a very fast-paced game, uh, very exciting. Uh, you know, if we finish a few more buckets inside, uh, maybe we'd have the spread a little bit better. Uh, both, both teams are just really, really getting after it right now. Manaman with 12, Larson with 10. Do you like uh, the uh, contribution they're making right now? Oh, most definitely. Uh, both of them are seeing the floor well, and uh, we're finding some uh, matchups inside where, you know, Larson can get some ISOs, and uh, Renee's doing a nice job finding the holes in the defense. Taylor Hickey, two points. Is that part of the game plan? You know, uh, the first two games down here, she really got it going the second half. So, uh, so far, uh, it's going okay. But uh, uh, I know she really likes to pick it up a notch or two in the second half. So, we're going to have to really continue our effort on her. All right, Coach. Uh, Coach Dick Youngers, thank you so very much for joining us here at halftime. Hey, thank you for having me. Coach Dick Jungers, head coach of the Newell Fonda Mustangs. And uh, he has his uh, team leading here. They had a 6-0 lead. And let's go back down to the floor for more of the festivities here at halftime of the Class 1A game at uh, Wells Fargo Arena. The Jack North of Basketball Award is given annually to the senior that receives the most all tournament votes at the state basketball tournament. The award is named in honor of the former publicity director of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Presenting the award tonight is IGH SAU Executive Director Mike Dick. The Jack North Award recipient captained the 2013 Class 4A all tournament team, averaging 16.3 points four assists, and 3.8 steals a game to pace Cedar Rapids' Xavier to the Class 4A state champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 recipient of the Jack North Basketball Award from Cedar Rapids' Xavier, Kayla Armstrong. The Character Counts Coach of the Year Award honors a worthy recipient who embodies the six pillars of character, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. Rather than spotlight winning records and isolated acts of heroism or generosity, the award was conceived to recognize individuals whose coaching lives and achievements demonstrate an enduring commitment to any or all of the following qualities associated with good character. Presenting the Character Counts Coach of the Year Award is Mark Wills, Karen Brown, and Clarence Hudson. The 2014 recipient of the Character Counts Coach of the Year is Gary Richardson of MOC Floyd Valley. In recognition of this honor, a $1,000 cash award will be made in the name of Gary to MOC Floyd Valley's athletic departments to further enhance character development initiatives. Gary has been a teacher, coach, and school administrator since 1978. He has coached at Danville, Harris Lake Park, and MOC Floyd Valley. He was MOC Floyd Valley's superintendent of schools from 2002 until his retirement in 2013. Gary served as a volunteer assistant girls basketball coach at MOC Floyd Valley and assumed head coaching duties in 2013, where he has now led the Lady Dutch to a second consecutive state tournament appearance and his team will be competing in the Class 3A championship tomorrow night. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 Character Counts Coach of the Year from MOC Floyd Valley, Gary Richardson. Congratulations.
The Iowa, Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union's Golden Plaque of Distinction Award honors the Iowa coach who has demonstrated a successful career while making notable contributions towards school, community, and the coaching profession. Presenting the Golden Plaque of Distinction Award is IGHSAU Executive Director Mike Dick and Assistant Director Joel Oswald. The 2014 basketball recipient of the Golden Plaque of Distinction Award is IKM Manning's Gene Rasmussen. Gene has been coaching basketball for 15 years, starting his career at Shaler Creslin before taking the reins of the IKM basketball program in 2000 and IKM Manning when the two schools merged in 2008. Gene has guided seven teams to the state tournament, winning state championships in 2006 and in 2009. In that span, he has won 82% of his games and collected his 300th career victory January 17th against Underwood. Under his, under his tutelage, 14 players have gone on to play basketball at the collegiate level. Gene and his wife Jennifer are the parents of daughters Callie, who is a junior starter on the Wolves basketball team, Kia, and son Kyler. The Rasmussens are in the process of adopting two boys from Ghana, Africa, and hope to have 10-year-old Amos and 7-year-old Davis home this summer. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 recipient of the Basketball Golden Plaque of Distinction Award from IKM Manning, Gene Rasmussen. Congratulations. Congratulations on our awards, the Character Counts Coach and the Distinguished Coach and the Golden Plaque Coach Award. So congratulations to them. We are at halftime here. It's Newell Fonda leading Burlington Notre Dame 33 to 26. And throughout 2014, Iowa Public Television is celebrating 45 years as your public television network. IPTV has a long-standing commitment to Iowa's youth. Over the years, we've covered athletics, showcased the arts, provided a forum for teen issues, and have been a valuable partner in the classroom. Let's look back at 45 years of coverage with younger Iowans. Iowa Public Television's high school sports coverage reaches back to the earliest days of our network, which was established in 1969. In the last 45 years, our coverage has taken us poolside. I was just wondering how much work, you know, it would take to get to the 1980 Olympics. Track side, mat side. Both wrestlers were working hard and to athletic venues throughout the state. She has, and she's staying aggressive. Out to the 25. The 30, the 35. In addition to showcasing athletic excellence, we've also highlighted students' musical and artistic achievements. requires music and dance put together, not anything like Las Vegas or anything, but just, just a show choir to go around, represent the school at contests, and it's a lot of fun. because I like to perform. Ever since I was four, I've loved to do shows. One, two, ready. In my own world. I want to be like a Martin Luther King, giving power to an audience that I speak to one day. IPTV's statewide coverage has also provided an avenue for students to share their thoughts about important current events and social concerns. Their unique perspectives have lent insight to issues within our state and far beyond our borders. Since 1987, researchers working to fight world hunger have been honored with the World Food Prize. Young Iowans have joined in the fight. And not only 
do we now know that we can make a difference abroad, locally, but we can continue to make a difference? Everyone who is aware of the awful terrorist attack on our country has been deeply affected by it, and that includes Iowa teens. We were taught that the U.S. was invincible, and that's what I always thought, but this sort of proves us wrong and sort of scares all of us. I'd like to know how much of the information that we're actually getting is accurate. Representative Leach, can you answer that question? A message to like people being bullied is you gotta keep your head up. You gotta know that these words can't really hurt you. You're more than what they say you are. You're you. At Iowa Public Television, our mission is to provide innovative media and services that educate, inform, enrich, and inspire Iowans. They call us the survivors of our sport just because it really, it just, it pushes you to your physical and mental limit. So much at stake tonight. Establishing a legacy that we continue to build on today. We salute all of our young Iowans who've taken part in past programs and eagerly anticipate what future generations have to share. You're watching Iowa Public Television. IPTV is proud to have served as your network for the last 45 years. And we are at halftime here of the Class 1A game at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines, Iowa. Noel Fonda leads 33-26, and it was a uh, interesting first half, to say the least. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Burlington Notre Dame, it was a different star this time. It's Corey Miesker. She was uh, trying to take the place of of other teammates are just not popping up. You see Miesker again with another two, but uh, Newell Fonda, who led 7-0 early, came back. Claudia Larson was a big reason they got here, and she had two more right there. Larson finished the first half with 10 points, and there is another bucket for Larson in the second quarter. That was a nice give and go from Manaman to Larson. You're gonna see more of Manaman. Here she pops the J from the top of the key off to the right just a little bit. And then Manaman again is gonna go coast to coast. Stop, pop, and shoot. Manaman with 12 in this first half. And joining us now are the coaches who uh, are very familiar with both of these squads. Wayne Cafferty of Colonesco and Steve Chittister of Janesville. Coach, uh, I'll start with you. Uh, Newell Fonda is a very good basketball team. You found that out the other night, but Renee Manneman, she was someone you tried to keep in check. Right now, she's popping off for another 12. Yeah, it's tough to slow her down because she's such a good ball handler, and, and when she does break the press, she does see the floor so well, and like we saw early, she hit a girl in the corner for a three, and even after make basket, she can push the ball up court and get uh, hit teammates for layup, so she's a real good quarterback for them. I was able to ask Coach uh, if he liked the tempo at half. If you're Newell Fonda, do you like this tempo? Do you agree with Coach Jungers? Uh, both teams are used to fast pace. I mean, uh, let, well, first round, Notre Dame scored 90 points, and they can light it up. And, we, you know, we, um, we think uh, we'll find a score about 60 on us, and but they're both explosive, so fast pace is going to be good for either team. They're used to it. All right, Coach Chittister of uh, Janesville. Steve, good to see you. And uh, Burlington Notre Dame is a, a, a team that can score a lot of points in a hurry. They're trying to push, push uh, the tempo, but uh, it's Meesker tonight that's scoring big for them. Yeah, some of it is that she's got some rebounds and then she's been aggressive and attacked the basket after she's gotten the, the rebound. But this is uh, two teams that are very similar. And I was kind of wondering how this was going to play out with uh, both teams liking to push it, both teams like to uh, full court press, and, and both teams like to shoot the threes. And um, uh, right now, Newell Fonda has got the best of it. But, you know, as we found out last night, uh, I don't think anything, any lead is uh, safe with uh, either one of these teams. And uh, Corey Meesker is uh, impressive, but also it was Taylor Hickey. You took the ball to her in the uh, in your contest in the first half, but she was able to come out in that second half. Do you think that's something that uh, Coach Jungers is trying to do as well, kind of follow your blueprint on that? Well, I don't know if he's following mine. He's probably a lot smarter than I am, but... but uh, you know, you don't, I guess you don't have to be real smart to see uh, what kind of a player she is and what kind of an impact she has on the team. And, you know, not just a scorer, but uh, she's a, a tremendous leader out there for them, as uh, Manaman is for uh, Newell Fonda. All right, Coach Cafferty, uh, i got to ask you here, if you're on Newell Fonda, what do you do in the second half? Uh, do you do anything different, uh, any adjustment that you make here against Burlington? You know, they just got to play tough D. You can't let Notre Dame get on one of their runs um, with a three. You got to make sure you cover up on the three ball because, as we found out last year against them, they can hit a couple real quick and boom, you're down uh, against them. And, and so they got to make sure they cover up on that and 
you know, Larson and, and uh, Mandeman are, are going to be the ones that have to come through for them. But those other girls, they can step up. They're all good ball handlers, and they got some shooters. And Larson, she's going to go play basketball at Northwestern. She's a very good athlete. She had 20 rebounds, 20 points against you. I mean, what makes her so effective down low? She's just so shifty. I mean, and athletic. I mean, she's more of a three. Or, you know, she likes facing the basket more, and you know, she has a good crossover move uh, that a lot of girls use back in the six-on-six six days. And um, and and she's got good touch and athletic. I mean, she had 20 boards against us, which really hurt us because she's just so shifty in there so you know both of them are going to be really good players for coach Shaw up at Northwestern all right and uh, coach Chittister if you're Burlington if you're coach Alford right now in the, in the locker room what are you doing for adjustments well I, I expect them to really turn up the defensive pressure that I think they're going to come out a little bit harder and and uh, take a few I think you're going to see them uh, take a few more chances with the threes and you might see a few NBA threes this second half now, earlier this week, Coach Cafferty, we talked about uh, coming up here if things didn't work out in your way. One of the reasons you wanted to uh, be here tonight is because of what happened at halftime. Your close friend, uh, Gary Richardson, uh, from MOC Floyd Valley, just got an award. Talk about your relationship with him. Yeah, he was my mentor when I first started teaching up at Harris Lake Park. Um, we spent seven years up there. He was a social studies teacher and, and then turned into principal. And, and we uh, were the blind leading the blind, coaching volleyball together for two years, which uh, that was a lot of fun. And I learned a lot from him uh, working with parents and players and, and students. And uh, he's been a good friend ever since. And, and we kept co close contact. And, uh, and you know, we will be talking tomorrow. I'll be sitting behind their bench tomorrow night. And I think I saw you at the game the other night. You saw Alexis's, Alexis Conaway's uh, incredible performance of 46 points last she's night. not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and to think she's not going to play basketball but volleyball at Iowa State. Yeah, I mean, she had her choices. I know he had coaches calling her for both sports. And, and incredible athlete and and um, you know and, and Fenley could easily talk her into or get her to come play for him he'd take her I'm sure because uh, she's a dandy uh, with her athleticism and the way she can play. All right very good uh, I appreciate you guys joining us that's uh, Wayne Cafferty head coach at Colonesco and Steve Chittister head coach of the Janesville Wildcats thank you very much gentlemen for joining us tonight. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. All right uh, the third quarter is coming your way here in just a moment halftime Newell Fonda 33 Burlington Notre Dame 26 back after this on Iowa Public Television. IPTV's live, uninterrupted coverage of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Iowa Farm Bureau Basketball Championships is available for sale on DVD. $30 includes tax and shipping. Call 800-779-7000 or visit us online at IPTV.org to order your copy today. A fresh new season of Iowa Ingredient is coming your way. We'll hit the road to uncover delectable ingredients grown or raised in Iowa. And we'll take those ingredients to talented local chefs who'll teach us how to cook up Iowa-grown flavors for our dinner tables. Coming in April on Iowa Public Television. Hi, I'm Bill Riley. Join me for a delightful look back at our favorite Iowa State Fair moments. We'll relive the best of Iowa Public Television's 2013 coverage and also crack open the archives to showcase some of our video gems from the past. Tune in March 14th to have fun with us at the fair. 33-26, we're at the half here of this Class 1A State Championship with Laura Leonard, I'm B.J. Shaven, and Laura, we thought this one was going to be like a cage fight. It really has turned out to be that way. I mean, these two teams taking it right at one another. Well, they really are. We knew it was going to be up-tempo and high-paced, and both of these teams really like to run. And I, I think it's in Newell Fonda's favor right now, the tempo, but I think you're going to see a lot more of that here in the second half. Well, in the first half, I mean, we talked about the stat stuffers that these two teams do have, and, you know, the statistics that they poured in, uh, when we take a look at the first half statistics here, you see that Burlington Notre Dame shooting right at about ah, about 35% from the field and Newell Fonda right at 48%, which is what they really wanted to do. But a lot of that is off of the, the offensive rebounds they're able to put back. And then, of course, the, the three-point shooting from the outside, Burlington Notre Dame unable to really uncork a few from the, the more than they would like to. Yeah, they really have not been able to get the looks that they normally get from beyond the arc. And so you have to believe that they made some of those adjustments at halftime to try to get some open looks uh, from out in long distance range. The points in the paint even at 16 apiece in the second half. We'll see what adjusts for these two squads. We do know that they both do have to travel quite a bit to get here to Des Moines. 
Burlington, of course, hailing from southeast Iowa. Take a look at the old map. That used to be at Betts Auditorium. And then, of course, Newell Fonda hailing from Northwest Iowa, about 145 miles here to Wells Fargo Arena. I know both of these two teams have really taken in the city. And when I say they've taken in the city, they've really taken in the city here this week. Well, and I think they've picked up a few fans locally that have come to watch these two teams because they are exciting to watch. They're fun. They get up and down the floor. And I love looking at that old scoreboard and the old map of, of uh, that they used to have up at the state tournament. That's a nice little uh, look back into history. Well, Lauren, we look at it for Burlington Notre Dame. Here's a team that fell down by 11 points in the semifinals against Janesville. They rallied for a seven point win the reason why they fell down they shot 21 percent from the field in their first half they shot 48 in the second and a lot of their field goals came from three-point range and talking to the coaches at the half they had mentioned look out for Burlington Notre Dame they might start free floating some of those shots from wherever they want to on the court well and they do they have the range they have the shooters that can do it so you have to defend all over the court because they are not afraid to let it fly from deep Folks, here's what's at stake. These two teams are vying for their first ever state championship. So if you're sitting at home, you might want to pick a favorite or pick a good finish here because I think we're going to get it with Burlington Notre Dame and Newell Fonda. The Mustangs have been in this position before playing for a state championship. It's their fifth time, as we had mentioned, since 1997 they played in the title game. And by the way, the assistant coach there, you just saw Kevin Larson of Newell Fonda, his daughter Claudia, play, you know, is on this girls team. And Kevin actually played on the 1991 Boys State title team, the first ever championship for Newell Fonda. You don't think that might mean something special for him to see his daughter bring home a title to Northwest Iowa? I think that would be a, a fantastic story. It just kind of completes the circle. and. You know, you go back to last year's final, Newell Fonda lost to Central Lions 63-61. Renee Manneman in that ball game had 18 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists. Claudia Larson 12 points and Taylor Schrank 11. So they just fell two points short. They're hoping that doesn't happen here in this game. So Burlington Notre Dame will have the basketball. Their starters out on the floor for the second half. That's Taylor Hickey weaving the basketball and then going to be called for a travel. She's joined by Corey Mesker, Courtney Kaufman. Riley Kilbride and Emily Salvador. And for Newell Fond, it'll be Renee Manneman, Taylor Shrink, Brianna Wells, Jade Hess, and Claudia Larson. Burlington Notre Dame, the scoring machine, being stymied here in the first half, just 26 points. For some, that would be a milestone. Yeah. But for Burlington Notre Dame, they're used to averaging about 40 per half. Yeah, when you can keep them under that 20 point total per quarter, you've done your job. Taylor Hickey gets the rebound and out ahead. Boy, great recovery there by Manneman. It was Courtney Coffin who hit some killer threes against Janesville in the semi. She's quickly covered up. And now this one tied up. And the possession arrow will give it to Newell Fonda. A little sluggish start for both of these two teams. How much energy did they exert in that first half? Well, I think they did a lot. And here's a look at uh, the game leaders. Corey Mesker with seven points, keeping Burlington Notre Dame in uh, in the ball game in the first half. So here's Manneman working it inside the paint. Actually kicks it back out. As Newell Fonda will reset. Driving it well is unable to get the shot through. Wells doing a great job of not stopping. Just saw a little daylight. Kept her momentum going, kept that ball up in the air as she made that step through against the defenders. Newell Fonda with her largest lead of the game here at nine. You might have remembered at the end of the half, the score that everyone had here in the arena was wrong, except for those who were doing it the old conventional way, taking it on the paper. They got it corrected for you Notre Dame fans that are wondering, OK, what in the world happened to that score? It actually got corrected. And they had it right. They just had a misfire on one of the keyboards. Here's inside to Larson on the offensive putback. The moneymaker. She's got another double-double. Does Claudia Larson had 20 and 20 the other night? Tonight, already into double digits and rebounding in points. And this one's going to stay with Burlington Notre Dame. Well, her length is huge on the boards, but here's a look at the three-pointer 
off the mark. You could see Larson coming in from behind with those long arms getting the rebound and the putback. Here's Kilbride and gets the first bucket of the second half here for Burlington Notre Dame who had fallen down by 11. Is there something magical about the 11 for the Nikes? We'll find out. As the lead trimmed back down to nine. Inside Newell Fonda pumping it with Hess and she lost it. And it will go to Burlington Notre Dame. Salvador doing a great job just standing their ground in the post defending with the arms straight up not fouling not dipping the hands and she's the only senior on this team going to go to Central and play basketball. Mustangs with some changes Wilkin into the game along with Morenz and Feline. 5 12 to play here in the third period Burlington Notre Dame has really had to work each offensive possession here Salvador inside Morenz gets bodied and will go to the hoop make that Mesker. Going to the hoop, fouled on the play by Wilkin. Nice look by Salvador, just a little dish as Mester makes that cut to the hoop, moving well without the basketball. Got bodied up and gets to the line early in this third quarter. Well, Mesker's done the job here tonight, now with eight. Riley Kilbride has seven for Burlington Notre Dame. Taylor Hickey, who's averaging nearly 20 a game, has been held just to two. They've, Terrific job by the Mustangs. Yeah, they've done a nice job, really hanging around her, shadowing her, keeping another defender close, so if she makes a move, there's two people on her. There's Manaman doing what a Manaman does, feeding the ball. Another assist for Renee Manaman. That's her fifth as Feline put it through. And her teammates just know they have to be ready, have to have those hands ready because a pass could come to them at any time. Here's Hickey inside to Salvador. Taylor Hickey, not only can she score, but she can distribute, averaging a state best six assists per game, gets one there, and the lead back to eight. And that's what she did in the semifinal game. She was not really hitting the mark with her shots, so she tried to get involved in different ways. Here's Manaman, killer crossover. And why not with the hoop? And with ease, too. Just that crossover dribble clears her of the defense, and she just glides into the hoop. Here's Kilbride. Can't get the shot off, and Manaman with the rebound. Newell Fonda out ahead. Here's Larson. Too close to the hoop. And Hickey with the board. Burlington Notre Dame, Laura, I think, needs to find the go button, and it's not there as they're called for a travel. I think maybe a little frustration. Maybe you want to bring it down a notch, slow it down, try to get into a good set if you can. Try to get some momentum back. Nice crossover dribble. Look at her just step through the defenders, glide to the hoop. Jade Hess back into the game here for Newell Fonda. She'll check in for Feline. And Burlington Notre Dame will put Taylor Hickey on the bench in as Courtney Abel, the 5'5 junior. So here's Hess working the baseline. Now to Larson. She'll be fouled on the play and count the bucket. Claudia Larson to the line. Good ball fake. Larson gets inside, able to draw the contact, get that foul on Schwartz. She's shooting 58% from the field here at the state tournament. Claudia Larson with a big night now, 7 of 11 here from the field here in the championship game. But she has 11 rebounds and 15 points. So here come the Knights as Salvador will go to the line. That's more Burlington Notre Dame style, is it not, Laura? Absolutely. They like to push the tempo off of makes, off of misses on the inbound. If they can beat the defense down the floor and get themselves in position for an easy bucket. Salvador sinks the free throw. What a career it's been for Emily Salvador, the lone senior in the lineup here for Burlington Notre Dame. She said they went from a sluggish style of an offense to now you know, averaging over 80 points a game in high school basketball. She's actually going to go to Central College to play her or further her career there at Central. 
And she's also a captain of this team, and she kind of helps the defense out, helps the post players out, and uh, that's her charge as a captain. And Taylor Hickey is also another captain, and she kind of helps the guards out. Uh, and that's what the two of them do. They've divided up their duties and have responsibilities as captains of the team. So Burlington Notre Dame back with the ball, down by 10. Newell Fonda has been way more than what I think a lot of people thought would be effective defensively here against Burlington Notre Dame. I mean, the Knights are really struggling here from the field, and here come the Mustangs. Well, they're still pushing tempo, and they're trying to get that running game going, just not getting the great angles, and they're rushing their shots a little bit. Newell Fonda, who hails from the Twin Lakes Conference, actually went 9-0. Coach Dick Junger said it was conference play in the Twin Lakes, which really helped them prepare for this championship run. There's a steal by Coffin. I think Newell Fonda knows that they're going to have to try to get three-point looks to try to climb back into this game, so they're really defending hard out on the perimeter, and then they get the good steal. Coffin called for the foul, the frustration foul. That's going to be the third team foul called against Burlington Notre Dame here in the late half. Take a look at the turnover numbers here. 15 for the Nikes and 14 for the Mustangs. So each team has really turned it over a lot as Taylor Hickey re-enters the lineup here for Notre Dame. Here's Larson going to be tied up by Hickey and they're going to call her for a travel. And Larson, a little frustration, gave the ball a little love tap on the ground and now she lost well, her wrap around her finger. A little frustration with that big jump stop. Got tied up right at the free throw line and got the ball back to the official with a little authority. Stepping back now and playing defense. Defending as soon as they get across the half court line, really causing problems. Joanna Myers into the game, has the ball now. The freshman forward goes inside. There's Mesker, can't get it to fall. And now a blocking foul called against Burlington Notre Dame, and Larson's hurt. A little bit of a collision over there on the sideline, and you can see she's in some pain. Trying to walk it off if she can. I don't know if it's an ankle, if she turned that or got need. But she's going to stay in the ball game. Third quarter in the quarterfinals, Burlington Notre Dame scored 37 against Adair Casey. So far here in the championship game, they've been held to just seven by Newell Fonda. It's been a smothering defense on the perimeter for the Mustangs. Here's Manneman. Can't get the 15-footer in the rebound to Coffin. Burlington Notre Dame's trying now to change things up a little bit, maybe trying to trap up top to see if they can get the miss or the turnover. Here's Hickey for three. Can't get the deep shot to fall, and Coffin tracks down the board. Here's Myers for three. Why not? The freshman lets it loose. Good hustle, a second chance opportunity. They find the freshman wide open. Well, Faleen can't hit the bucket on the other end. Here comes Burlington Notre Dame showing some life. Here's Hickey. Taylor Hickey going coast to coast. It's to a five point game. The Knights can do just that. They can score points in a hurry and that's why they never panic when they're down. Now the three ball from the wing. Off the mark, Baleen with the putback, can't get it. And a foul here called against Newell Fonda. This one against Maddie Morenz. That'll be her second. Sometimes it just takes one play for a team to flip that switch. And I think Burlington Notre Dame got that play off the rebound, got the second chance opportunity and the three point shot. Timeout taken here by Newell Fonda. Let's take a listen at the bench with Coach Dick Jungers and his team. Going right up with the basketball there. Now, defensively here, okay, defensively here. Contain it, contest those shots, secure the boards, okay? Look at the time, okay? Look at the time here. Here we go, let's go. 
Team on three. One, two, three. So with 38.7 to play, Coach Junger's asking his team to just look at the time. Laura, what does he mean by that? Well, first of all, you want to take a look. You have 38 seconds left here before the end of the quarter. You maybe just want to hold it here. You've got some momentum on your side. Get a big bucket right before the, the buzzer. Well, Newell Fonda has gone cold from the field. Just one of their last seven. And here comes Burlington Notre Dame. Mesker at the high post. Now to the freshman, Myers. We got him started. Now inside, Mesker. Overshot the hoop, and Madman with the rebound. Will hold for one. I like the play coming out of the timeout. They did a great job of getting it set up. Just could not get the ball to fall through the hoop. It's a five-point game. This is a big possession here for Newell Fonda. Maneman trying to drive it. Hits it to the post. Faleen will be fouled with 2.7 on the clock. What a point guard Renee Maneman is. Well, they get the screen up top. And she's able to see that the defense is staying with her and give that little lob pass over the top. Faleen's free throw off the mark. There's a look from behind the bench of Colin Alfred, head coach of Burlington Notre Dame. He was here as a player, actually, with the Knights back in 81. Team went to the semifinals and fell out 44-38, and the shot won't go for Burlington Notre Dame. So we've played three quarters. It's a six-point Newell Fonda lead with eight to go. And let's go take a listen to Colin, Colin Alfred of Burlington Notre Dame. Hey, you've worked really, really well right now, okay? You're within five, six, okay? We're only two possessions down. Keep working, keep running our defense. Spread it out, spread that 41 out, all right? But finish if we drop it. 40 white to 12. Hey, we got a pressure on the 12 too, all right? Pressure on the 12. Hey, you worked all year for this quarter. Okay. Here we go. You worked all year for this quarter. Let's go. That's Burlington Notre Dame's head coach, Colin Alfred. And what words? You worked all year for this quarter. And you know, that's got to strike you. <laughs> It, and it's so true, though. It comes down to one quarter that you have worked all season for this moment. You're playing for the state title, all that hard work that you've put in in the summer, and all the hard work that you've put in in the weight room. And you could hear it in his voice. And everybody nodded in agreement. Yes, we have worked for this, and we've got to get it. And he said, you're only down two possessions. Burlington Notre Dame's team motto this year was one team, one dream. Newell Fonda trying to capitalize and do something they've never done before, as is Burlington Notre Dame. Six-point game. Here's Taylor Hickey. Goes inside. That's Salvador using the glass. Did a good job of pinning her defender, and Hickey found her. Pressure on the 12-2. Renee Maneman, is that who's going to see a lot of it? You know, I don't know if that's so much pressure on the 12 being Manaman or that their defense is a 12 is what they call it, the, that they've numbered it. And he wants a little more pressure out of that defense. Shrink can't get the shot to fall. And fouled on the play was Kilbride. That's going to be the fourth team foul against Newell Fonda. However, going back to that, I would put a lot of pressure on the 12 and <laughs> being Manaman. I'd get out there and really try to pressure her. Depends on what language you speak, right, in basketball? Exactly. Everybody has their own language, and you implement that early on as players come up through your system. Salvador can track down, or does track down the ball. Seven minutes to play, four-point game. Hickey directing traffic, asking and getting. A little bit of a window, nothing there. Now the three. That one left a little short, tracking her own rebound is Colin. 
A lot of times those three-point shots come off long, so you have to screen out. And if you're the shooter, you have to go after it. Here's Hickey. Rejected away by Larson. This one thrown away, and it will go into backcourt. They're going to say it was deflected. Newell Ponda wanting it over and back. Not happening. A long possession here for Burlington Notre Dame. Trying to capitalize. Kilbride gets it. Are you kidding me? From way up top. Two. Kilbride hit a huge three-pointer in their semifinal game. Under a minute to go, everybody thought, don't shoot that shot. Hold the ball, get fouled. But she let it fly, knocked it down. And just like this, launches from deep at the top of the key. And now a timeout taken here by Burlington Notre Dame. It's a one point game with 6.09 to go. So the Knights want to talk it over here. As Burlington Notre Dame Sensing a little bit of a push here. Let's go to the Newell Fonda bench and see what Coach Dick Jungers is telling his squad. Behind, okay? 21 behind. Recognize that they're clearing out, okay? They're clearing out, so keep attacking that way. Now, uh, be ready. They're going to start running all their spread, alien, uh, one high sets. Keep communicating those, okay? Keep communicating those. Get a long pass, take it from them. Here we go. Team on three. One, two, three. Burlington Notre Dame on a 12 to one run has pulled within one. This is a Newell Fonda squad that many of these players have played in the state softball tournament last three or four summers. They've been here to Wells Fargo Arena. Now they're trying to cap off something here. But a team that's been very pesky now lining up in the zone. Two three is Burlington Notre Dame. Starting to spread out that defense. And this one will stay with the Mustangs. Is that dangerous with Larson inside? Uh, it can be because you are get opening up the lane when you really spread out and get out on the perimeter. And she's dangerous when she gets it down low. And you have to believe that they're going to be able to recognize that with Manaman out on the perimeter and handling the basketball. Here's Wells inside. Really attacking and will go to the line. Again, a 68% free throw shooter, Brianna Wells. There to shoot two. And Riley Kilbride picked up the foul. That'll be her third. Back to a two point lead. Mustangs getting their offense from the foul line. And here comes Burlington Notre Dame with an opportunity for the lead. They get it! Did you see how quickly they got the ball into the front court? They got the ball in the hands of Hickey. She was able to beat the rest of the people down the floor and found Coffin wide open for the three-pointer. 46-45. Burlington Notre Dame has rallied from way back. Here's Larson. Can't get the shot to fall, and a foul will be called against Jade Hess. Hickey got the ball into the front court so quickly. A little no-look pass off to the left side. And that shot gives them the lead. Burlington Notre Dame has fought back from 12 points down to take a one-point lead here. Here's Hickey. Can't get it from 15. Larson with the rebound and is fouled by Schwartz. Claudia Larson has taken a lot of dings. And she's delivered some when Newell Fonda built that 13-point lead. And now it's a one-point advantage here for Burlington Notre Dame, but to the line goes Claudia Larson. Well, you said she's been getting knocked around a little bit. She keeps popping right back up, staying in this ball game. Going to step to the line to try to tie this game or maybe take the lead back. Larson able to sink the free throw. A huge night tonight for Claudia Larson. 
13 rebounds, 16, make it 17 points. Newell Fonda with the lead again. Here's Kilbright. Can't get it. Hickey with the rebound. Put back, not there. Larson going to be fouled and will come down to the other end to shoot some more free throws. Couple of opportunities for Burlington Notre Dame. They had the good look. The shot's just off. Hickey crashing the weak side boards. Could not get the ball to go. And then the foul out of frustration. Right there, you get the shot. And then over the top, Larson again with those long arms able to outreach everybody else. Five minutes to play. Claudia Larson will toe the line again. And it's been a long time since Noel Fonda has hit a shot from the field. And Mesker will be fouled by Manaman. who will pick up her first personal, the team's sixth. In fact, the last time that Noel Fonda hit a shot from the field was right at 3.33 back in the third. Little full court pressure here by the Mustangs. Kilbride having trouble getting it in and will get a, and will be granted a timeout here. I don't know if she got it called or if the bench got it called, but somebody got it called and it was a much needed timeout. So a timeout taken by Burlington Notre Dame. They're left with two remaining. Let's go to the bench with Newell Fonda. Okay, uh, Hickey's on the floor. Okay, you can bring a jump up on that, but gotta cover the shooters. No, no free threes here, okay? No free threes. Offensively, okay? If it's zone, it's two games shifted with you two, okay? If it's man, I want uh, a one high shifted, okay? Here we go, team on three. One, two, three. Laura, for me and for those of you watching at home, what did he just say? <laughs> he said, be ready, then they might switch up defenses on you. So if you would get a zone, they want a two-player game with Manaman and Larson. And then if it's a man-to-man, -man, I'm not sure exactly. I think they wanted to set a one-high set to let Manaman work off of it. Well, Fonda just one of their last 10 from the field, and a foul here called against Wells. Kind of an excuse me foul. And we'll go to the line as that's going to be the seventh team foul called against Burlington Notre Dame. So Riley Kilbride will toe the line 84% from the stripe this year. Sinks the first one. She's been averaging nearly 14 points a game here at the state tournament and tonight has 11. It's both of them. And Burlington Notre Dame out in front. 48-47 and a turnover. Here come the Knights. Mesker will be blocked out of bounds. That's a fifth block of the game for Claudia Larson. She had five blocks in the semifinal. You just, she's alter shots. When somebody comes into her territory in the paint, she makes the shooter alter their shot. Kelker will get the ball here to Salvador. Now to we'll play it around the perimeter. Kilbride thought about it. Now to Salvador. 15-footer shooting 80% and better from the field here in the state tournament. Emily Salvador makes it a three-point lead. Here's Manaman. And Salvador called for the foul. Salvador on the season. Averages just a little over five a game. She has eight here in the ball game tonight, and it's always welcome when you have a player that averages right around those five, six, seven points if they can give you about three or four more points in a big game like that. Anneman with 14. This is the front end of the two shot opportunity. The rest of the way. Newell Fonda will be in the double bonus from the foul line tonight. Newell Fonda just 10 of 21. Might be some head scratching going on if things don't go their way. Here's Kilbride. Mesker will attack. And finish. It's a two possession game here as the Mustangs look to go at it. Here's Manimum to the corner. Wilkin can't get at the ball. Now Kilbride. Newell find a very cold from the floor. Here's Kilbride. Will be fouled and will go to the line. And Larson is hurt again. 
Burlington Notre Dame has really made Newell Fonda speed up. Now here's a look, Mesker with the good ball fake. She did that early on in the first half, was able to keep the Nikes in this ball game. Was a little quiet through the third quarter. They get her the ball and she responds. There's Claudia Larson grimacing in pain. Not sure if she knocked knees or came down awkwardly. But Burlington Notre Dame in the second half has erased a 12 point deficit. And Claudia Larson, who has a very, very bright future ahead at Northwestern. She's moving that ankle, trying to move that foot around a little bit. See if we can take a look right there. She steps on Kilbride's foot as she was going up for the layup. And you can see right there, she's jumping up and down in pain. It's that left ankle. And now Haley Feline will come into the game to spell her the 5'11 junior. Feline with five points in the game. And at the line is Riley Kilbride. Still a lot of time left on that clock. 3.42 to play. Five-point game right now as we stand as Kilbride will fire. Talked about Kilbride coming alive in the fourth quarter in the semifinal game for Burlington Notre Dame has come alive here in this fourth quarter in the championship game. Burlington Notre Dame on an 8-0 run. It's been all nights here in the fourth quarter. From the corner, taking that three. Morenz can't get it to fall. And Wells will track it down for Newell Fonda. And you get the ball in the hands of Manaman. No panic whatsoever. She backs it out, directs traffic. Wells can't get it to fall. Faleen fighting for the ball, and it's Mesker who came away with it. Now Hickey. Taylor Hickey held to just four points of the night, came in and averaging 20, but she's okay right now with the ball in the lead. It's not their nature to hold the ball, but you have a little bit of a lead. See if they might take some time off the clock. Going to Notre Dame. Coach Colin Alfred telling him to go to the corners. Win a state championship. Kilbride from the corner. That three off the mark. And the rebound tracked down by Newell Fonda. Where they had Brianna Wells all by herself. She had broken away and got down the floor, but they couldn't find her. They find her there, though. Wells fouled and would go to the line, and now it's time for Newell Fonda to start making some free throws down by seven here with 2.24 to play. As a team, only 60% from the free throw line. Now you have to step up to the line, you have to concentrate. Wells connects. Back to a two possession game here. You see the time left, the bottom right of your screen. Taylor Schrank will come back into the game for Newell Fonda. One out of two for Wells from the line. Looks like they're going to go a 1-4 flat and let Taylor Hickey work the ball and run a little clock. Their best ball handler for Burlington Notre Dame. Here's Hickey in the corner, will work the baseline. Goes for the shot and is going to be called for a travel, a turnover. And Newell Fonda will get it back. Both teams in the bonus. Newell Fonda in the double bonus and some pressure here being applied by Burlington Notre Dame. Manaman will pick it up. Here's Wells for three. Got it! And just move the ball around the outside of the defense, calmly knock down a three to get back within three. Nearing the 90-second mark in this game, three-point contest. Burlington Notre Dame with the lead in the ball. You can see Coach Alfred over there telling him to spread it out. Spread it out. Let's run a little clock, and he's going to take a timeout and talk about it. 
Going to burn another timeout. He'll be left with just one timeout remaining, 54-51. Burlington Notre Dame erased a 12-point deficit here on the second half, most of it coming here in the fourth quarter. Now, long-range jumpers, Kilbride has come to life here in the fourth quarter. Coffin from out in the corner after Taylor Hickey finds her on the break. Then they go low high instead of high low, and Salvador is able to knock down the free throw line jumper. And then Corey Mesker, who was strong in the first quarter and kept her team in it, finally gets loose and gets a bucket. What, what does Newell Fonda need to do here? Is, uh, Dick Junger is going to tell us what his team wants to do. Jerry, um, we want to, if the ball gets into uh, 21's hands, that's the one to, to code red, okay? That's the one to code red. Get the steal, get the steal, okay? Here we go, team on three. One, two, three. We got three timeouts and we need them. All right, Newell Fonda getting those words. Down by three here, 54-51. Minute 20 to play. And you heard Code Red. They do not want to foul Riley Kilbride. They want to try to get the steal if they can. That's the first order of business, if you can get the steal. And then you're going to have to see who you can foul right away to keep this clock stopped. So Burlington, Notre Dame, back at it again. Kelker will put it to Hickey. Here's Hickey, gonna be patient. Again, not a senior out on the floor here for Burlington Notre Dame. All underclassmen. Coffin, can't get the 17 footer and the rebound for Newell Fawn, an opportunity to tie it up on the possession. They go inside Wells and she'll be fouled on the play. And we'll go to the line here with 49.2 seconds to go. Again, Wells breaks away as the shot goes up. And Manaman, using those softball skills, fires a strike down the floor to Wells, and she's able to get to the free throw line. And for Taylor Hickey, that's going to be it. That's her fifth. She'll exit stage right. Four points, and she's going to leave it up to her teammates to try to get this championship won. Wells misses the front end of the two-shot opportunity. It's been a nightmare tonight at the line here for Newell Fonda, 11 of 24. And you're going to see this pressure heat up from Newell Fonda because their primary ball handler for Burlington Notre Dame is out of the game. A three-point game. And some pressure. Larson back in, Claudia for Newell Fonda. And a 10-second call called against Burlington Notre Dame with 38 seconds to play. What do you do here, Laura? Do you go for the two, or do you try to go for the three here? I think you can go for the two right away. They have timeouts left. Newell Fonda has three, so I think if you can get a quick score inside, get it into Larson, let her score, and then get a quick timeout, get your defense set again, because again, as we just saw there, 10-second count, maybe not as confident ball handlers as they normally are with Hickey in the lineup. Emily Salvador will come into the game. Brianna Wells, the best three-point shooter for the Mustangs. Here's Shrank. Got it! We're tied at 54! They just played catch over on the right side of the floor until they found an opening. Burlington Notre Dame with one timeout remaining. will go for the shot and a foul here. Renee Manneman fouls Riley Kilbride with 11.8 to play. Let's take a look at this three-pointer, though, by Shrank. Just a good look back and forth, and they get the opening. Shrank able to knock one down. Tied at 54, 11.8 to play. Kilbride there to shoot the one and one and sinks the first one. What a night for Riley Kilbride here in the championship game. A team best 15 points. Make it 16. And now a timeout, the final one taken here by Burlington Notre Dame with 11.8 to play. It's a two-point contest. 
We've got to find out what's happening inside of that Burlington Notre Dame huddle. What will Colin Alfred do here defensively? 24, Hanneman and so Burlington Notre Dame going to come up with a strategy here, Laura. If you're on that bench, what would you do? Would you foul? Or knowing how Newell Fonda has struggled at the line, what do you do? I think you just have to play it straight up defense. I don't think you put them at the line. I think you've got to defend. You've got to contest every shot. And if you're Newell Fonda, you're not going to go for a three. You're going to try to get the ball into the front court in a hurry. Try to get the high percentage shot, that you, the best percentage shot that you can get. The winner gets their school's first ever state championship. And if you think about it, last year, Newell Fonda in this ballgame lost by two, 63-61. Emily Salvador was out on the court. She was that extra player out there. Now Courtney Abel into the contest forward. Larson will put it in play. Just a shade under 12 seconds to go. Manneman will have it. And you don't have a whole lot of height out on the floor. Inside of five, Manneman goes inside the ball, not free. And Metzger will be fouled with nine-tenths of a second to go in Burlington Notre Dame sensing a championship tried to make the pass inside I kind of thought Manaman might have the opening but tries to dish it off inside they had a good set they cleared a side for let her dribble through the defense and create but the good quick hands of the Nike is able to knock the ball away and Newell Fonda will take a timeout. Burlington Notre Dame's theme all year has been one team, one dream. Hey, okay. everybody saying that? Now, hey, still got 9 10. Play right to the wire here. Get over. Now, if she makes it, okay? If she makes one, this is still got to call timeout right away. Now, uh, makes them both, still call timeout. Everybody understand what we're going to do here? All right, go. get this thing. Team on three. One, two, three. 56 54, Burlington Notre Dame with a lead and will be at the line with Corey Mesker, who's had a huge night tonight. A double double for her 10 points, 13 rebounds. And for Newell Fonda, you have to feel for him. In the title game for the fifth time since 1997. Last year, falling just short against Central Lion. And here tonight against Burlington Notre Dame, the Nikes spot their way back from 12 points down. It's a two-shot opportunity. And now Mesker will get another shot at it. Do you make or miss here with nine-tenths of a second? I think you miss. It gets the clock going. And gets the celebration started in Burlington. Here's Mesker. Makes it. Three-point game, 57 to 54. And Newell Fonda will call for a timeout here. One more opportunity here for the Mustangs. Well, I think here's a couple things you could do if you're Newell Fonda. You put uh, Manaman as the out of bounds. She's got that softball arm. We've seen her make some long passes that way. Put her as the inbounder. But if you're Burlington Notre Dame, you're going to bring Salvador back into the lineup and have her just stand on that inbound line, be straight up and down as much as she can, and try to defend against that. But Newell Fonda, I think, is going to set some screens, try to get somebody open. Realistically, nine tenths of a second, you can get a shot off. And it looks like Newell Fonda's strategy might be a little bit different as Larson is going to put the ball in play here for Newell Fonda. You see the Knights fans already celebrating. Got a three-point lead here. Larson able to run the baseline. We'll get it in Manaman. And that's going to be that. A state championship for Burlington Notre Dame. The Knights fight their way back from a 12-point second-half deficit to win the 1A state championship, 57-54. What a way 
to start the championship run here at the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Girls State Basketball Championships. When you're a team like Burlington Notre Dame and you score a lot of points, you know you're never out of a ball game. They were down most of this game, but able to flip the switch late in the second half and able to overcome a big deficit and win this ball game and their first state title. Let's go to Tim Fitzpatrick as the all tourney team will be announced. The presentation of the trophies. As again, Burlington Notre Dame wins it 57 to 54. Let's go to Tim Fitzpatrick, the public address announcer. President of the Iowa Farm Bureau. From Newell Fonda, Claudia Larson. From Burlington, Notre Dame, Taylor Hickey. From Colonesco, Caitlin Reese. From Janesville, Victoria Lay. From Burlington, Notre Dame, Riley Kilbride. And your captain of the 1A All-Tournament team from Newell Fonda, Renee Madaman. Presenting awards are members of the Girls Presentation. Athletic Union Board of Directors, Greg Thomas, Roger Francis, Deanne Kramer, and Mike Cormack. Your Class 1A runner-up is the Mustangs from Newell Fonda and Coach Dick Jungers. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2014 Class 1A state champions, the Nikes from Burlington, Notre Dame, and Coach Colin Alfred. to Notre Dame, your Class 1A state champion. They knock off Newell Fonda to get their school's first ever title. What a game. Let's go to Paul Yeager, who's standing by with this game's highlights. Paul. 
114 teams play basketball in Class 1A. You now have a champion. Let's take a look at how Burlington Notre Dame did it in this contest. They trailed by as much as 12 in this ball game, and it was done mostly by that player for Burlington, that be Corey Meesker. She was all over the place, inside, outside. Gets the rebound there and the putback for two. Meesker would finish with 11 points and 13 rebounds. Claudia Larson, who just made the all-tournament team, she came back in. Larson headed to Northwestern to play basketball. Newell Fonda, Renee Manneman to Larson. Great combination all season and all career. They'll continue that in Orange City. In the second quarter, it still was Newell Fonda in control. That's Renee Manneman for three from the right wing. And then Manneman again does it on the other end. Stops, pops, shoots, scores. The Mustangs were feeling it. They were up 12 to begin the third quarter as we got into that third quarter, that is. But Burlington Notre Dame would not go away. And that's because Riley Kilbride would continue. Back to Larson for Newell Fonda. She's fouled and the bucket. Larson had a great basketball game for Newell Fonda. She finished with 17. But again, it was Riley Kilbride for the Nikes. Kilbride for 16 as the Nikes were beginning to feel it. However, it was not over yet. Newell Fonda comes back on the uh, three-point basket to tie it at 54, but in the end, it's free throws and a bucket, and the Nikes win their first ever state title, 57-54, and they finish the season at 24-3. It was a uh, impressive performance by the Nikes. They practiced at a lot of places across the state. What they did is they practiced all over, got used to these big venues and thought, this is a business trip. They've been here all week. They'll go home to Burlington holding the hardware. But you know what? That's just game one. If you think that was exciting, we've got another one coming up, and that's class 2A. And that's going to be coming your way right now. As le Let's talk with Laura Leonard, and she has the player and coach to find out what happened in this ball game. It was an exciting one. Laura? Uh, they really worked hard all summer. They worked hard the last three years. Um, and this, this, it's just a, a dream come true for a lot of kids in our community and our school. So I'm very proud of what they've accomplished. All right, slow start in the first half. What adjustments did you guys make in the, in the locker room at halftime? Well, we had to start playing within ourselves and do what brought us here and play good defense and move our feet. We were, we were kind of reaching and, and losing our players on the court. And, and so we made a little bit of an adjustment back to a, a matchup zone, and that, that helped us a little bit. And, and uh, not press as much. What do you think the difference was that keyed the comeback for you guys late in the second half? Uh, just the energy. I, I thought that we finally started bringing some energy to the ball game, and, and uh, we started hitting some shots, and we started making our layups. All right, Coach, let's talk to Corey here. Corey Mesker, in the first half, you kind of kept your team in it, and uh, you were able to get loose when everybody else was being shut down. Talk a little bit about what was going on uh, against you guys defensively in the first quarter. Um, you know, we weren't really um, playing very well. Our defense, it wasn't really working, but I kind of pulled the girls together, and I said, you know, hey, um, we need to like, pull together. You know, this isn't us. We can do better than that, okay? That's just what I said. So talk about all the hard work. You heard Coach say that you guys put in a lot of hard work to get to this point. What did you guys do to get yourselves ready for the state tournament? You know, we were here last year, and we really wanted to be here again. And just everything we put in through the summer, all of our open gyms, all our three-hour practices, two-a-days, they all paid off. And the group of girls, they're amazing, and I wouldn't want to be with anybody else. All right, congratulations. You're a state champion, and we will go back to Paul. All right, Laura, thank you very much. Congratulations to the Burlington Notre Dame Nikes on their win and uh, state championship here in Class 1A. As we said, 114 teams started the year, all with a dream of taking home the trophy, and the Nikes did it. We're just getting started. We have another one to go, so thank you for joining us on our inaugural night of girls basketball tournament coverage here on IPTV Sports. We'll be back with more interviews, features, and basketball. The two-way championship is coming up your way right here on statewide Iowa Public Television.
Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Basketball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Whether you live in rural Iowa or in the big city, the Iowa Network Services family of companies and your local provider are working together to keep you connected by offering technology and business solutions like internet, data networking, and other business services. The INS family of companies keeping communities connected today and tomorrow. Fairway, along with Mondelez Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay, is a proud sponsor of the 2014 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Basketball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist. Providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Iowa banks know you want honest advice about how to best reach your financial goals, whether it's financing and education, buying a new home, growing a business, or funding retirement. Iowa banks, Iowa values. MyIowaBank.com. Mid-American Energy, diversifying the ways we generate electricity by investing in wind generation capacity in Iowa. Information is available at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. You may know right where you belong. Helping you get there is our job. At DMAC, we connect what you want in life to what you do for a living. With more than 150 programs, transfer degrees, and short-term certificates, DMAC can position you for a great career.